Eevee, the adorable evolution Pokemon that has an absolute chokehold on the Pokemon community. They're just adorable little guys that have identity crisis every time that they have to evolve. <laughs> Who doesn't love that? So that's why today I'm going to be making my very own Eevee cosplay, but I'm only going to have 12 hours to do it. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Sticking to everything. It's literally the first step and it's been two hours. Hey, hey, hey. And everything's just going wrong and it's fine. So why only 12 hours? Well, I mean, we've all been in those situations. Last minute costume parties, like the day before the convention and you haven't even started your costume. You're a crafting YouTuber who remembered that they should probably make a Halloween related video before the end of October. You know, all complete hypotheticals. So Eeveelution cosplay and fan art have been around for a while, but recently I came across this one on my Pinterest and I knew immediately that I needed to make that hat. But Jess, didn't you already make a giant witch hat earlier this year? Uh, yeah, and can never have too many. I mean, come on, it's something combining Pokemon and spooky season. Like, how could I refuse? So to kick things off, we're going to go on a little shopping montage so I can get all my supplies. Let's go. Guess I'll just shuffle from behind my desk. All right, first things first on our trip is to actually go to some secondhand stores because I'm going to be looking for clothes that I can either modify it or use for fabrics for the cosplay. Mostly just looking at earth tones because I wasn't sure what I was going for because you never know what you're going to find, like this cat shirt that will stare into your soul. After finding a few items, I headed over to Joann's because if we're making a fuzzy Eevee hat, we need some fuzzy fabric. And after browsing all the available fabric, I decided to go with the fleece that was on sale. But before I could pick up the second fabric, someone came around the corner and I got embarrassed that I was filming Filming, so I had to pick up my camera and then while I was checking out out of nowhere someone asked if I had a YouTube channel I didn't film it because it would be weird but like someone actually recognized me while I was at Joann's and I was checking out and I, they were super cool but unfortunately Joann's doesn't carry EVA film anymore so now I'm at Michael's and I do hold it against that person specifically that I now have to be at Michael's 12 seconds later Michael's also didn't have EVA film well to Amazon we go later so this hat is mostly going to be made out of EVA film. Want to know how much fabric I bought? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm going to do with all this, but I just panic whenever I get up to the fabric counter and go like, yeah, I only need a half a yard, but let's just get two yards just to be safe. Like, why? Why do I do this to myself? I'm going to have so much extra. To be fair, I would always like to have more fabric than just barely not enough. And as for the Goodwill haul, since I'm giving myself such a limited amount of time to do this, I think the majority of project is going to be the hat and then the rest of the outfit is going to be mostly a closet cosplay. Um, I did find some fabric that could become a little, little capelet sort of thing. Capelet, is that what it's called? So a lot of Goodwill finds are going to be upcycled for that. All right, we've got our fabrics closed our EVA foam. So now the timer will be starting now. Maybe I should have moved all this stuff off the table before I started the timer. Okay, this is fine. It's all part of the crafting process. All right, so first things first is going to be the foam base. And lucky for me, we already have a template for this. I'm going to be using the same template that I used for my mushroom witch hat. This template is made by SKS Props. He has a whole video dedicated to it, which is where I found it. And the pattern is available for free on his website. So if you want to follow along, make sure to go and download it from there. And luckily I have it already cut out. So that saves some time already. So I get to skip straight to cutting out the EVA foam. Now a slight difference that I'm doing is I'm using five millimeter EVA foam rather than the two millimeter because last time the hat was too floppy after a few uses. So this one will be more sturdier and more stubborn apparently. And from here it's as simple as just tracing out the pattern onto the EVA foam. Unfortunately I didn't have a wide enough piece of EVA foam so I had to fold the pattern in half and then cut twice out to glue later. While I was doing this step, my cat Mumbo decided that she was going to cause problems on purpose. She's learned that if she knocks into my tripod that I have to stop filming to feed her. In her defense, it was dinner time, so I had to take a slight break to give her a little bit of fancy feast for my fancy girl. Not before a few spins, though. <laughs> Once back to work, we have our two donut halves. All right, now I have to glue these donuts together, which brings me to a very important and monumental announcement about the channel. And that is after so long, finally, I have upgraded to a better hot glue gun. That's right, baby. No longer using the hot glue gun that is literally probably older than me. It's time to go into the future. <laughs> 
There's literally nothing fancy about it. It's like just like the most basic one, but just like compared to this one that looks like it's been uh, thrown up on. It feels so nice. And since I rely on hot glue to answer all my problems, I thought it was just about time. <laughs> Now we have the brim of our witch hat, which when tried on, not gonna lie, kinda just looks like a silly little cowboy hat right now. So for the cone of the hat, I'm actually gonna be switching back to a 2mm EVA foam, but following all the same steps as before. Oh god, this is already a mess and we're only on the base. Alright, now we have the cone of our witch hat with an absolutely ugly seam in the middle, but it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter because we're just going to hide it away anyway. And because what matters is that we're going to cover it in fleece anyway. That way it will look like an actual fleece hat on the outside, but on the inside we just know that we glued in some foam. Okay, all we've done is cut out and glue some foam together and it has been two hours and 12 minutes. <laughs> What have I been doing this whole time? Let's just move on to cutting the fleece, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so I have two colors of fleece. One is more EV fur toned, and one is like a dark complement of that. And we just gotta trim it to the same size as the foam. Now in order to attach the fleece to the floam, floam? Did I just really say floam? To attach the fleece to the foam, I'm going to need to glue it down with some fabric glue. This is what I used last time and it worked pretty well and it has this convenient little sprayer so it should be pretty easy. Nope, nope, it, it stuck. Nope, I was a fool for thinking something would work twice so uh, plan B, just go and pour it out and hope for the best. After trimming off the extra crust, all of our fabric is secure. And it's definitely looking good, but after trying it on... It might look even more like a cowboy hat now. <laughs> this is just destined to be a cowboy hat. That's what it wants to be. All right, these are done and need to dry, so I am stopping the timer. And we are currently at three hours and six minutes. Not bad. At least for the hat, this is the base of it. The rest is just going to be decoration to make it look like a cute little, little Eevee Pokemon. <laughs> so I would say we're at a pretty good time right now. These have to dry overnight, and then we can move on to ears and the crown. Tomorrow. All right, it's a new day, and this is now fully dried. We're going to move on to the inside decoration, which is going to be adding some of Evie's little like fur star pattern thing here. So we're going to be doing that with all this fuzzy fabric. Again, way too much fabric for just like one star. So we'll see what else we can use it for. Uh, originally I was going to do the star by hand, but then I realized that I don't want to do that. <laughs> Since I'm a graphic designer, I'm just going to whip up a template real quick for the star so I can do it right the first time. By placing the shape on top of the template before printing it, I made sure it was to the correct size. This pattern is probably going to be the first thing you see when you see the hat because it's going to be right under the brim, so I wanted to make sure it's the right size. This fabric is super nice and fluffy, but also I keep on finding this shedding around my room to this day. Now at this point, I have to glue on the star to the brim because it's too thick for me to sew. However, at this point, I was wondering if I should sew down the edges so that they're not just left raw. And I almost did take the extra step until I came to my senses. Yeah, right, who am I kidding? I'm just gluing the thing on. I'm on timer straight and ain't no one got time to bring out a sewing machine. Look, just gluing everything down isn't my proudest moments, but when you're on a time limit, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And as long as you do it neat and hide away all the unsightly parts, it's fine. Speaking of unsightly parts, we have to do something about this edge on the brim, which I'm going to be using this faux leather ribbon. And how are we going to be doing that, you might ask? 
Okay, so the hot glue had some mixed results to say the least, where it did cover it, it did get it on there. However, when folding it over the edges, it just, it, it was not coming out even, it was coming out all lumpy, but I kind of couldn't take it off at this point, so I'm sure there's a better way to do it, but for now, it's good enough. I mean, it's not terrible, as long as you don't look at it with your uh, eyes, so let's just not do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's a new day and we're going on five hours of crafting now, so let's quickly put together the cone. Just to clarify, originally when I thought of this idea, I did picture me doing this and filming it all in one day. However, just the way my work schedule turned out, um, I couldn't do that. <laughs> so that's why it's being broken up over several days. Now with the cone assembled, it's starting to look like a real genuine witch hat. To attach it, I'm going to be using hot glue and I'm not really caring too much about the seams because I know that they're going to be covered up later anyway. The important thing here is to make sure it just doesn't fall off. <laughs> Congratulations! We got a witch hat. Now it's time to add those adorable little Eevee ears. Following a lot of similar steps as earlier, it's going to be making a template and then cutting it out. Now for the ears, I'm going to be using 8mm EVA film to make sure that they're thick enough to stand up on their own. Now that the shapes are good, it's time to cover it in the same fleece from before. When I got to the front of the ear and I was wrapping around the fleece from the back, I would try and roll up and then hot glue the fleece so it had a little bit more dimension. These by no means were perfect, but it is meant to be fur, so it makes a little bit more sense. Love the fact that I followed like all the same steps, but you know, this one came out super clean and this one's just a mess. I don't know what happened, but we're still just going to roll with it because we're running out of time. Okay, how does it look with the ears on? <laughs> oh, that's adorable! Look at the little ears! Um, I don't think I need to make the hat this big. Um, <laughs> it takes up the entire frame. Oh no. Yeah, we need to fix that. Last details, just to take a little bit of scrap fabric and add those lasso triangles at the bottom. Alright, ears. Done. They look adorable, but we are not going to be attaching them yet. There's still stuff that we have to do at the base of the point. In the concept art that I'm following, they have a crown that has gemstones representing all the evolutions. Uh, luckily, once again, I'm a graphic designer who can make templates, so I went ahead and made a little template of the crown that fits while being like wrapped around the thing. Oh, that's going to look so good on there. Oh, I can't wait to do this one. So now I just got to take this template and cut it out of even more EVA foam. I can't believe it's been eight hours and it's only been on the hat. This has actually been so interesting timing this because in my head I always underestimate like how long it's going to take me to do something. So it's great to be able to like time it and be like, oh, something like this is going to take me like a day to do. If I'm like really working towards it because this timer is only going when I'm like crafting crafting. Also, it's like 10 p.m. and I've just decided that I want to full send it and finish this project. So we'll see how long it takes. <laughs> you know, when I'm doing projects like this that use so much EVA film, I kind of run out of commentary on what I'm doing. Like, I trace a template, I cut the template, I paint the template. That's about that's about the extent of it, you know? For this one, I'm going to be priming it with a layer of warbler. And then I almost forgot, but I needed to add a little centerpiece for the center gem. I was genuinely surprised with how well it turned out because I kind of just eyeballed everything about it. But now it's time to make this a golden crown. After three coats of the gold paint and a glossy varnish, we end up with this. It's looking nice and shiny, so it's time to add a little bit more shinies. Technically, I don't think that there's a normal type stone in the game, but we're going to use it to represent our little Eevee anyway. 
While doing this, it got me thinking about the fact that we have not had a new Eevee evolution in about a decade. I mean, come on, it's been so long since we've gotten Sylveon and there's more types that they can make. Genuinely, I'm pretty curious now of what people would want to be the new Eevee evolution. Because personally, out of the types that they haven't done yet, I want to see a flying type because I imagine it kind of looking like a hippogriff and that just sounds so adorable to me. But what type do you guys want to see? Who knows, maybe it'll be the next generation that we get one. Oh yeah, also, like, uh, the hat is done. I realize I just, I've been talking about the evolutions. Uh, <laughs> After just gluing and assembling everything together with a few small details, it's time to finally add on the ears. I knew it was going to be kind of difficult to make sure that they'd be secure, so I just tried hot glue at first, but it didn't quite do the job as well. So that's why I took these little lace pins that are super, super small and basically invisible once they're in. And I very carefully placed them on the inside to where I knew the ear was and then hammered them in. And after doing that a few times, our hat should be all finished. All right, it was a late night, but the hat is done and is coming in at 10 hours. So technically, if you really, really only worked it on crafting, you could get this done in like a day or a weekend, perhaps. Hypothetically, we could just call this cosplay finished. So if I'm going for the 12 hour goal, I still can make something in two hours. The other day I ended up stumbling upon this YouTube short where she shows how to make this long vest out of nothing but like half a circle and some holes in fabric. It looks really simple, but I think it will pull the whole cosplay together. It's either make that or make a tail. And when I suggested that to my roommate, they called me a furry. So we're going to make the vest. <laughs> All right, two hours, let's go. All right, taking the extra fabric that I got, let's see if I can make this. Though already running into troubles of whenever I put anything on the floor, Mumbo decides to be a little silly. And even when I try to evict her, she keeps coming back. <laughs> well, according to the tutorial, all I needed to do is just to make the biggest half circle that I could. Folding the fabric in half and making the radius from the corner, I cut out my half circle. Um, and admittedly, it was a lot shorter than I thought it would be. Okay, I didn't have quite as much fabric as her, so it's a, it's a little bit shorter, but only by a little bit. This, this is, this, this can still be a vibe. I'm still going with it. <laughs> so now we just need to make holes for our arms. I love that I'm just using Sharpie to draw on it. Something like that. Uh, we'll have to experiment. If I had known a single thing about how a sleeve works, I would have known that this tiny circle was just like absolutely not going to work. Can I get my arm through there? Um, okay, um, <laughs> I had to make the hole a lot longer because um, it, it keeps on getting shorter and it looks like a cowboy vest now, but I guess the hat also started out looking like a cowboy hat. So I'm going to keep going and I might have a way to fix it. Yeah, no, it wasn't necessarily fixing it, but just making it usable by just making the hole bigger. Yep, um, I know, looks exactly like Morgan's. <laughs> But here's my idea. We're bringing back out the white fur, put it as a little trim along the edge, and we're going to frame it to look like Evie's pattern. And we have an hour and 20 minutes to do it. I don't even know if I explained what I was going to do properly, but just watch, it'll turn out good. Uh, okay, uh, good was a, was a strong word to use there, now that I know how it turned out. Um, well, definitely an attempt was made. I cut out a strip of the fuzzy fabric, and then I tried to wrap it in on itself to be as neatly as possible and attempted to cut all of them into a triangle pattern. Which didn't not work, but it definitely didn't like work. But I was able to go and trim it up to kind of look like the pattern. Honestly, at this point, I'm glad the pattern even just fit the circumference of the circle. Man, I wonder how I'm going to attach this trim. Look, look, I promise, I promise after this video is over, I'm going to go back and I'm going to actually sew on the trim to the thing. I'm going to make it properly. But right now we have an hour left. Like it is midnight in a hotel room and the conventions tomorrow and you want this done. Currently we're in, just make sure it holds together mode right now. We're not going for cleanliness. <laughs> so for right now, this is our answer. <laughs> we're going to need so much of this. I think you can tell from the confidence of my commentary that you can kind of tell how I'm feeling about the project right now. Maybe the vest wasn't the best idea. Maybe, maybe I should have just gone with the tail instead. 
Okay, so the pattern looks decent. Maybe, maybe it looks good. Who knows? Hmm. Okay. It doesn't look terrible, but this might have just been a bad idea from the start. Um, sometimes I think you just have to make things to be like, oh, yeah, no, that doesn't look good. I know I really rushed it as well, but even just the design itself, I don't love. Hopefully it's going to look better with like the full outfit and they're going to be staring at the ginormous witch hat anyway. And if we stop our timer, under 12 hours. So hypothetically, you spent like the entire day crafting with like no breaks. You could do this all in one day. I personally wouldn't want to do that. Maybe at least spread over two days, but still something that you could do in a weekend before a convention. Now let's see everything put together for the final reveal. This was such a fun little challenge to do, to make something that was really low stakes, but still challenging, but in a different way. And of course, inspired by something that I truly enjoy. If you like this one, but wish it was a little bit more cottagecore, make sure to check out the mushroom one that I did earlier this year, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!